Folks, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Today we are going to go over the features and assembly of a Del Marino 8 foot wide finish mower. This thing has five blades on it. Really excited to put this thing to work soon. So stick around. All right, so this is the first time I've had one of these. So we're going to be going through this together. But this is a Del Marino out of Italy. Okay, we've been selling their flail mowers for several years now. A lot of great feedback on those from customers and uh, wanted to try one of these out as well. So we've had a decent amount of demand from customers on finished mowers. And they're gonna make smaller units as well. Uh, I think 60 and 72 inch. You don't have to go with this big guy. But what you see here is how it came in shipped to us on a metal crate like this. Looks like it's mostly put together already, which is nice. Manual right here on top, that's good. Probably have to reference that. Oh, those are, those are pretty beefy. Now, so the one thing I will say, I don't really love how these arms are situated. I get it, it probably makes sense for packing, but they should probably try to secure them a little bit better. They have cardboard pressed in here, but they're just kind of rubbing on there. Looks like a little bit of paint came off. Let's see if this is a one-man job. Oh yeah, not terrible. So far, I will say everything looks looks beefy on here. Things don't look chintzy by any stretch of the imagination. Off. Those are big wheels. It's got three plates for something. Oh, look at that. That's cool. You see that? All the zerks right there. I love how that's set up. One, two, three, four, five. So you have the zerks right here uh, for all five of the mowers. Just routed right out. You don't have to get underneath. A nice solid top. Well, a couple more access holes here. A lot of a lot of grease points I noticed on this mower in general, which is a good thing. Want all those moving parts greased up with the loop shuttle. Say five percent code GWT. Okay, so first step, and we're gonna try to leave it right on that frame. There, that stand that it's on, but uh, is to put the, 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 the wheel brackets on. So one's gonna go on, on the right and the left side, so. So you have to start out pumping a heck of a lot of grease to fill them up, but that's okay. I mean, if you're going to use it, you're going to use it one way or another. Still pretty handy. That's pretty cool. All right, let's get this on there. I don't think that there's a, a right forward and back, like a correct forward and back. That's what I meant. From what I can tell, there are nuts welded on the bottom side that these screw down into. Okay, pretty straightforward. Repeat for the other side. Alrighty folks, well, had to do a wardrobe change. I was uh, melting, so pay no attention to the poison ivy or poison oak or whatever that itching, burning rash is on my legs. I'm going to try not to either.
Although I did put a bunch of anti-itch spray on there, which has a histamine blocker in it. Oh, also, we brought June out, so say hi to June. Oh, and I realized too, uh, when we go to greasing these, I'll pop one of these covers back off so we can see the grease kind of shoot all the way through that tube and, and down to uh, where it needs to go. Thought that might be kind of fun. Piece of cardboard there. We're gonna leave this center one off so we can pull this this cover off and uh, and show you that greasing later on. Wheels on, I believe. What do you think? Not for you, huh? Ow. Man, I wish we had a, <laughs> a scale out here. This thing is. That thing is a tank. Yeah, that's solid rubber. So, um, I had to look it up. I, I didn't realize that these were solid rubber and it lists it underneath the options available uh, as a solid rubber wheel. So I don't know if that's standard or not. I didn't, I didn't ask my distributor when I, when I ordered or when I got this in. So I'll have to ask my distributor if, uh, if that's just how they're all coming now or if that is an option, but that's a nice feature to have. So what these are are shims. These are gonna be your, your adjustment points, all right? So you can take all these off and you can put it underneath here. And then it would be, let's see, the lowest cut height. If you put all of these on there and then put it underneath, that'd be the maximum cut height, okay? So you can adjust from this point to this point. That's the amount of adjustment you can have. You can change it in different quantities that you want to. So we're just gonna, I don't know, maybe throw uh, most of them on, I think, first, and then maybe at least just leave one on top. Ooh, that is a heavy, heavy caster. Okay, so we'll lift it up for now. Throw one on there. Get that ready first, maybe. Put that through. So then they'll they'll freely spin. We're gonna end up greasing this point on all locations So it'll spin and turn as you need to and again You can see the shims there Adjust those as needed then just repeat for the other three There we go, I'm following the instructions in the order of the book, but in theory, it might be nice to get the three-point stuff mounted on here so you don't have to manually lift that up. I could get, a, could get a jack if I had one out here, which I don't right now, and jack it up, or just manhandle it like I am. The spec book says this weighs a hair over 700 pounds. So I'm gonna see if I can lift this up with a 1025R, it lists a horsepower range from 12 to 70. This is the biggest one that they have. There we go. Um, I don't know if it'll run it or not, but I'm gonna at least give it a shot. We'll show you if it'll work or not, or at least tell you. I don't know if we did this step before or after. Well, at least that lines up. I wonder why these front ones, oh, let's make it floating so you can take these, release these front ones and make it float, must be.
Yeah. some play. Just let it kind of sit there. Let it sit for a second. Or I wonder if it's supposed to go on the in, no. I wonder if it's supposed to go on the inside on these ones. All right, so I moved these to the inside. The uh, bottom, underneath the hole, the bottom steel was rubbing on top of here. The Instructions didn't really say one way or another. And the you know the basic images, which didn't show this model in particular, they showed the smaller units that are slightly different. Showed these arms on the outside, but I think the inside is just the logical way to do it here. Whatever, if needed, we can change it later. And there is a bottom, a bottom slot down or a bottom hole for these back arms, so. You could potentially, well, you'd almost be like pulling the top of this back because you'd be drawing down to the bottom hole with the, with the bracket, so it would push this whole thing back a little bit too, which um, I'm going to think about before I tighten everything down if I want to do that or not. All right, so we're going to make do with the tools that we have here. Most of our stuff's elsewhere. Per usual, someday we'll be set up nicely. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy, side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below. Oh, there's a nut on the back of this one. Great, and it's really on there. Hi, hello. Put on there too far. <laughs> so weird. Now, presumably, this goes on here like this, huh? And is adjustable in a slot. So, note to you guys: um, loosen this thing up when it's on this. Well somehow prop it up. We, we had to remove it off the stand the way that it was set up. Well, maybe we should have blocked it up higher or something so we could have access under there because that was an unnecessary pain in the butt.
just a little shroud for the end of the PTO. So this right here is a little PTO shaft holder. Doesn't say anything about it in the manual. I will say these Nipex are great. You guys recommended them because we were using channel locks in a video, I don't know, a long time ago. And it was, or at least had the ability to chew up the corners on here and uh, these nip picks have been great when we need them in a pinch yeah got that there okay alrighty folks you're looking at a pretty much fully assembled XRM 235. This is a nominal eight foot wide. I think it's the 235 I'm pretty sure is centimeters and converted to inches it's about 93 inches or so give or take. So you know maybe just a hair sh uh, narrower than than eight foot but close enough. So it's rated it says to work on 12 let me double check this 12 to 70 that can't be right. Yeah rated to work on 12 to 70 horsepower tractors. I thought I might have been going crazy there, but um, that's quite a range. And so it must not draw a ton of um, power off the PTO to, to operate this. So we're going to try it if it'll lift it. My bigger concern rather than the PTO is the lift capacity on the 1025, if it can do it or not. It weighs 705 pounds, uh, add a little bit for the, uh, the gear oil, not a whole lot there, but that's a lot of weight. We're gonna see if it can do it. I'm not convinced it can, otherwise we'll run it on the 3025E and see how that does with it. Now this unit here again has these solid rubber tires. It's listed as an option on Del Marino's website. I'm not sure if they're coming that way now standard or not, but when we get the listings up on our website, we'll, we'll put the information in there if they're standard or not, uh, or if it's an available option for you guys. 540 RPM rear PTO, category one three point hitch. So all your subcompact, compact tractors are gonna hook up to this. Now, I don't think this is quick hitch compatible. Uh, most finished mowers are not. You can see how this top link floats. And that's because you want this mower to ride right along the ground and just following the contour of the ground completely as much as possible to get the most consistent cut. And so that's why you're gonna see that on there. We'll try hooking it up with the, with the quick hitch and see what happens, but I don't think that's gonna be the case. A nice little PTO shaft holder. I wish every attachment had those on there. That's a really handy thing to have, uh, like your tillers and your brush hogs and everything else too. I do believe these pins here, these front ones on the lower links are made to be quickly releasable. That way um, you can pull it out and you have more float here as well. A lot more range so that everything is just floating right along and uh, probably pops back in there for transport to make it easier uh, to move around if you just want to lift it all up off the ground and and uh, take it along. Got a front anti scalp in the center right there. This is five spindles, all right? You're, you're, I'm gonna show you the Zerks on the backside there, but you've got a Zerk running with a tube for grease going to each of the, the five spindles, plus a couple extra grease uh, spots on top uh, uh, to get more spindles that are underneath there. Grease Zerks on each one of these um, gauge wheels all around the side. I think that's the extent of the Zerks that are on here. Now, this is a made in Italy unit we've been selling there. They're flail mowers for a long time. Now you can see these protectors back here. I don't really know what they're protecting from or protecting for. This is a rear discharge unit. Everything's gonna fly out the back way. Um, I don't know, I guess maybe time will tell on that. This top A-frame that's here, you can see this other set of holes that are down below. So you do have some adjustment there. Not sure if we'll need that or not, but we can play with that down the road. Again, we talked about the shims here. These are how you adjust your cutting height, all right, because it's gonna ride on the ground. So you adjust in these locations, all four spots to adjust your cut height. And you can kind of see how high the deck is off the ground right now. Uh, blades are, oh, where are the blades? Blades right there. That's a sharp guy. Yeah, these blades are pretty much sitting flush 
with the bottom of this pan here. So that's about your cut height right now, maybe just a hair lower than that, but um, gives you an idea. Thank you. No, thank you. Now again, this is the biggest mower that they have in this series. They are gonna have smaller versions as well. Um, I think 1672, maybe, well, hang on. I've got it on my phone here. I had their listing pulled up on their website. 48, 60, 72, 85, and 93. I don't know, we're gonna stock these pretty, pretty heavy next year, I think. I think they're gonna be a good seller. I know we're getting a few 60 and 72s in this year, so um, if you wanna get something for next year, let us know sometime soon so we can get them on our order. Alrighty, folks, we're gonna put this bad boy in action in the next video that we have coming up. We'll see if it fits on the 1025 and, and operates or not, but I know we have to add some gear oil, might have to cut down this PTO shaft, and then we're gonna put it to work. I wanna thank you for stopping by. If you did enjoy today's video, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right down below. And if you are looking for something like one of these finished mowers or all sorts of other tractor attachments, we're happy to help. We sell and ship all over the country. Check out goodworkstractors.com. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.